Well, good morning, friends. I bring you greetings on this beautiful Monday. Pray that your weekend was blessed. Uh, a little bit stormy yesterday. The wind certainly whipped up and uh, had some interesting weather. So you may be doing a little yard cleanup and that sort of thing. But uh, prayerfully, your weekend was one in which you got to worship and rest and be renewed. And you're prepared for a little extra work this week. So I'm excited to get into the word with you this day. And we're going to be in the eighth chapter of the Gospel of John. But before we get in, I want to take you to seminary for a moment. I want to take you, don't, don't get scared about this, it's just two, two concepts of how we interpret the Bible and apply it to our lives. And one is very right and one is very wrong. So let me start off with the, the right way. The right way is exegesis. Okay, This is just a big word meaning that we seek to, to discern the meaning, the, the intended meaning that God has for us in the scriptures and apply that understanding in our lives. How, how do we go about discerning that meaning? Uh, sometimes, you know, we, we read the scripture and it's very clear. Other times we, we struggle with the understanding and so we may apply uh, other scriptures and that's what that's a great way if you're reading say the Apostle Paul and he's teaching on the Holy Spirit and there's a part that you're a little confused on a little um, it, it's just not as clear as you'd like it to be one of the greatest places to go is in back right into scripture look at other places where Paul maybe wrote to another group of people on the Holy Spirit and, and maybe that'll bring more clarity um, and if you can't find it in another writing of Paul, look for other teachings on the Holy Spirit. And we might turn to Jesus and what he said about the Spirit. And so that can help us to understand Scripture more clearly. Uh, other things that can help us are we study the culture, the context, the history. Uh, we, we try to look at sometimes even the author of a book and, and who the author is writing to. So you look at the author and the audience and and overall, what is the book trying to say? What, what is that particular entire, like say the entire book of, uh, of Ephesians? What is Paul trying to communicate in the book as a whole? And, and actually a lot of Bibles have a, a little synopsis at the beginning of a chapter saying, this is kind of what this book does. It kind of gives you an overview. And so sometimes that can help us to, to better grasp the meaning of the scripture and then to turn and, and look into our lives and say, okay, well, where does this fit? Where, where can this be applied? How do, I, how do I fit this into my life? How do I apply this to what I'm going through? The other way of, of applying the Bible is through what's called eisegesis. Now, these are just big words that you don't have to remember them. You just have to remember the two ways of doing it. Exegesis, where we seek to discern what Scripture says and then apply it to our lives. Eisegesis, where we actually have an idea about how we want life to be or how we want something to unfold or whether we want something uh, approved or, or seen as right or good or pure or whatever the image is. And then we go searching the scriptures to find something to support our viewpoint. Maybe you've heard things in your lifetime where you, you've heard somebody quote a scripture and, and make reference to it in, in reference to something that they're doing. And it just kind of made you shake your head and think, well, I don't think that, I don't think that's what that means. Well, the answer is you're, you're probably right. It isn't what it means, but it is a, a very bad habit that, that we can get into where we say, okay, here's my concept of, of how things should work or what things should be like. And so I'm going to take that concept. I'm going to figure out a scripture that seems like it supports it. And then I'm going to take those words and I'm going to say that it does support it. Now, what does that mean? That means that sometimes we need to take a fragment of a sentence, or we need to take a, a, a scripture verse out of context in order for it to say what we want it to say. And, and if you've been around me, you've heard me uh, question and, and you know, some elements of, of doing devotions where the devotion encourages you to read a scripture verse or a part of a scripture verse and it just quotes it and then it goes on to tell a story. My fear is, is that sometimes those things are where somebody's got a story and they've applied a particular scripture. And if you, if you have to take a scripture verse and you have to pull it out and you have to say, just look at the verse, don't look at the context, don't look at the wider story, don't, don't look at where it's housed, just look at this verse and, and this is what this means. If you have to do that, and if you have to extract it in order to apply your meaning, 
odds are you are doing eisegesis. So just beware as you're reading devotionals, as you're reading other authors, that, that if they just start cherry picking little pieces of verses or, or individual verses and they pull it out of the context, they can make it sound like it fits their narrative. But I encourage you, go back into the scriptures. So this morning I thought I'd just take one that uh, it's, it's a verse that has been quoted by Christians. It's a verse that's been quoted by non-Christians. And let me just take the, the part that is quoted. Speak the truth and the truth shall set you free. Or sometimes we, we even lose speak the truth. We just say the truth shall set you free. And I've heard parents sit there and try to use this verse in, in terms of teaching children to, to always speak the truth. Uh, I've heard it in lots of different contexts. Wouldn't it be important to go to the Bible and say, okay, where does this come from? Well, let's dig into it. So in verse 31 of the 8th chapter of John, it says, The Jews who had believed in Jesus said, if he, or, or pardon me, to the Jews who believed in Jesus, believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And they answered him, We are Abraham's descendants. Have we, we have never been slaves. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you that anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you that I have seen, I have seen in the Father's presence, and you are doing what you have heard from your Father. So, so what is Jesus saying? He's saying? Let's go back to the beginning. He says, then you will know the truth. doesn't even say about speaking the truth. He says, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In other words, if you are following Jesus' teaching, if you are walking in that path, then you will come to know the truth that he is the Messiah, the Lord, the Son of the living God, and that he has come to free you from sin. That's the, that's the essence of this verse. What happens when we take a verse that has such great power in our lives and such great promise and hope that it fills us with, and, and we undermine it by saying, I want to extract part of that for the verse. I want to say that the truth shall set you free, and I, that's going to be my new context. We have just done eisegesis. We have just decided that my application, my thing that I want to be true is more important, so I'm going to grab the scripture out of context. I'm going to make it fit my scenario and I'm going to get my message across. Friends, I don't ever want to be lifting up my message. Let us always be lifting up God's message. Let us always seek scripture and not just read a snippet of a verse or even a, a single verse, but let's read the context of where it's housed. How, how, how sad it would be if we quoted to another individual that we were trying to lead, lead to God, the truth will set you free. When really Jesus says, and you will know the truth if you listen to my teachings, and that will set you free. Free from what? Free from your sins that separates you from God. Friends, let us continue to always be a people who go to the word of the Lord, who seek what the word is striving to speak, because God authored every word that is in this book and authored every word in this book to, to teach us and to guide us, to correct us, to pour out his love to us, to... I mean, God inspired every word in this book to be written and gifted to us. Why would we want to twist it into something that our human minds think will serve us according to our thinking? I want to know the mind of God. So let us always be a people who hunger for the mind of God. Let us hunger for the message of Scripture. Let Scripture speak into our lives, for Scripture has true power. Scripture brings transformation into the way that we think, into the way that we experience the world around us. Scripture teaches us the truth about Jesus Christ. Let eisegesis never enter our approach. And if we read others, if you're reading a devotional and it, it's just very evident, you know, you read their little scripture verse, you read their story, and then you go in the Bible and, and you read that scripture verse in its context and you realize that's not what it was saying at all. That has nothing to do with what, what, what they were saying it was about. Then you need to reject that teaching. And you may need to reject that teacher if you find that that tends to be their habit. So... 
Friends, always turn to the Word. Let the Word fill your life to overflowing. Friends, let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you and praise you that you have given us your almighty word, your living word, and, and it, it's poured into our lives. And Lord, we thank you that we can gather together, that we can read the word, that we can hear the word proclaimed, and, and that we have this great gift. And so Lord, help us through the Holy Spirit. Help us to always understand the word, interpret the word, and learn from the word as you intended. For Lord, you authored it for a purpose in our lives. We praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, friends, it's been great being with you today. Pray you have a blessed day. Know that God loves you, and so do I.